Hi and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at creating this mug handle and we're going to be building it from scratch. We're going to start with the basic cylinder and I've made sure that there's no caps on this so make sure that the caps are switched off. I'm just going to adjust the height segments and the radius is set to 50 centimeters. I then need an end side, so I'm going to get a spline, uh, an end side spline and reduce the radius down. That's going to appear in the middle here, so I'm just going to move it over a little bit so you can see it. Now we're going to be projecting this onto the side, but first of all we need to get the scale right here because it's a bit big if this is going to be a handle. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to try and make sure that it's going to be fitting into these four quadrants here. What I might do is just switch onto the front view here, uh, change my display because it's on ISO Palms at the moment, and uh, yeah, wireframe. So now we can see how that fits into this area. So that's what I'm aiming for. All right, so that's all very good. Okay, good. Okay. Right, so I'm going to switch the end sides to editable. I'm going to hit the C button. I'll also do the same on the cylinder. And now I'm going to use the project tool to project onto the side in the X, Y plane. As you can see, that's now mapped onto the side and it's uh, curved. Right, okay, so now in faces mode, I want to select these four faces here. And I'm going to subdivide them, so I'm going to use the line cut tool to just add some additional geometry into here. So I'm going to slice at angles just to create a few cuts. We need some additional geometry. And just cut this last one here. Right, okay, that's good. So in points mode. I delete the center point so that's where we're headed right now we're going to reposition some of these points that we've got in here and we need snap so I'm going to enable snap to snap the spline so with spline snap switched on we can now position each of these ones here so I'm just going to position these points here so these four points are going to be positioned correctly Okay, that's good. Okay, that's those four points taken care of. Right, I'm now going to add some additional points. So I'm going to use the Create Point tool. And I'm going to be clicking along each of these edges here. And creating additional points for points. There we go. So we've now got additional points here. Now we're going to make those snap to the spline as well. So we drag them over. We select the point and drag them over. I'm still in points mode. You'll see that it snaps onto the spline like that. Now, great if you wanted that sort of shape, but we actually want to combine these four points now that we generated. So I'm going to bring that point up to their intersection there. So these two points are now overlapping each other and also these two points here as well, overlapping each other. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to select these points here. There's two of them in the same place and click on the weld tool and click there and we get a, a welding of the two points together. You'll see that I'm using the count up there and that two become one. Okay, so we've now got uh, our points almost lined up. I'm going to use a loop selection, top and bottom, just to move the points down a little bit here loop selection, loop selection bottom as well, and reposition that slightly out, there we go. All right, okie dokie, all good. Okay, <clears throat> right, next I need to select with the edge selection tool, these edges around here, because we're gonna be extruding these. So now I've got these edges selected I need my extrude tool. Now watch my extrude tool settings in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. So I'm going to set the offset now uh, and the edge angle 2 and 22 and then hit the new transform a couple of times. And you can see what it's doing. It's creating this 
extrude but it's coming out at a nice curvature and if I get this here this view here and just increase this view okay can you see what that's created now all right now if I select these points here we can use a command called the set point value which is under mesh commands set point value okay in the Z I want this set to now is a gonna have to guess this one apply that no way out uh, no that's not no no it's gonna be let's go with the minus value again minus about oh, so I'm just gonna drag it now okay right now we've got an issue here and what I've done if I change this view here you'll be able to see that we've only selected half of the points because one of the options when we got this uh, the sex selection tool is to select through the elements uh, or through the points rather so got to be careful here get the selection tool only select visible elements must be switched off so now when I select these points here, these eight points, if I now go to the command, mesh commands, set point value, and apply that, I've now got all of the points selected and they'll all move so they're all lined up with each other in that axis. Good. Right, okay. Um, the reason why we've done only the top half is because we're going to be duplicating this and creating a bottom half as well. Right, so let's move on to the handle. So here I've fast forwarded a little bit. So I've set up an, two splines. We've got another end side that matches the, uh, the opening, which I, if I change the view here, you can see. And I've also got a profile along which I'm going to be moving it along so I've changed the, uh, the setup here okay so they both line up we're going to be willing this to a sweep of course so some of you probably guess that so we get the end side and we get the spline whoa wrong way around okay so we got our sweep and that matches our handle Obviously, you're going to make your own custom handle at this point here, but I'm just whacking any old thing in there for the moment. So I'm going to rename this in the top because we're going to be creating a top and a bottom half just for time's sake. In fact, I've just noticed that uh, I'm just going to rename this handle. Okay, just so that we're all clear with the naming conventions. Right, so we need a duplicate version of that. I'm going to rename that one bottom. And we're going to be marrying up the two. So we're going to move that down now. I need to move it down. And we're going to look at the coordinates here. We're going to dial it in exactly. So it's in the Y coordinates. And we know it's 100 should match top half there we go so we know what the bottom half as well and we're going to right click and connect objects and delete there we go so we've now got two combined to one but we're going to need to do some optimizing here so I'm going to select all the points and I'm going to come to commands optimize always a good idea to do this and it reduces the amount of points and welds all those points together. Okay, now we select the handle and we're going to hit the C button to convert this. And I don't need those caps. The reason why the caps have appeared is when I got the handle here, if you look down here, we got cap sets on. So I'm going to hit the C button now and convert that. So we don't end up with caps. There we go. Right, so the handle is now converted and the mug is converted. Once again, the two elements separate. We need to now combine these two elements. <clears throat> so I'm going to select both of them 
and I'm going to right click and connect objects and delete. Don't need that spline deleter and we've now got uh, combined shapes. So we're going to be using the bridge tool. So over to the bridge tool in edges mode, we're now going to link these two up. Now this takes a little moment to do. I'll just show you the first two or three here. And then I'm going to fast forward this video a little bit to the bottom half as well, where we do the welding up of the edge together. This is where you might have a few issues with snapping. And there we go. All looking good. Okay, we're in the right ballpark here. All sealed and correct. Okay, we need to worry about the bottom now. So the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to do a loop selection with the edge tool. So loop selection, bottom loop selection there. Let's move it up a little bit, a little bit of tweakage. Let's switch the snap off. And then I need to use the extrude tool. There we go. And hit and apply. It's going out. Come back in again. Okay, new transform. All right, that's looking good. Make sure it's square on. So again, once again, switch this view here. And then we can use the closed bolligan hole instruction now to close that hole at the bottom there, just to finish this off. So come to closed polygon hole. And there we go. So that's just quickly filled in the bottom. Not that you're really gonna see the bottom anyway. I don't want water all over the floor, do we? Right, now the top edge. Loop selection again, edges mode. Loop selection. And once again, extrude tool. So we do a little bit of an extrusion here. And then another one. We're gonna do a few steps here. And then we're going to drag the final extrusion down the inside of the mug to complete it all off. Just to give our mug thickness. So once again, I'm going to use my side view to make sure that everything's going at 90 degrees on that final extrude step. So one more. I do like this extrude tool. It's very, very handy. Okay, that looks about there. Just have a closer look. Make sure that it's exactly right. Ah, near enough. Okay. And then we want to extrude that all the way down to the bottom. But again, this is not too important because you're not really going to see the bottom when we pick an angle. We should know this is about 180. Yeah, there we go. Oh, too much. That's better. There you have it. In all its glory. So, switch to 3D view. There we go. Just ready for you to apply materials and all your fancy PBR lighting. Fill your boots. Or indeed, fill your mug. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, of course, finishing touch. Subdivision surface. But uh, I'll let you take it from there. That gives you the basic building blocks.